Hi, welcome to Car Mechanical. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change your Honda Jazz or Honda Fit engine oil and oil filter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the bonnet and we're going to want to make sure that you've got the car up on stands so you've jacked it up or you've driven it up on a ramp just to give you access to the sump underneath and we're going to undo that bolt. But before that, we're going to use something to catch the oil into. So I'm using this oil catch can here. And it's nice and handy because you can just easily pour it away when you take it down to your tip or recycling center. And this is just showing you where the sump plug is. So I actually ended up having to knock this loose off camera because if I needed to use both arms for it, it really put some force into it. These shouldn't really be on that tight. Uh, I can't tell if someone's just gone a bit nuts when they last did it up, or as we're gonna see across the jobs that it looks like the oil has been changed in forever. So we're going to undo the sump plug and we let it drain out. Now one thing just to point out as well is it can be worth replacing the sump plug and the gasket at this point. In fact, it's probably best to replace the washer or the gasket every time you change it because it avoids oil leaks. And typically I always do this before, but what I normally do is take the oil cap off up in the engine bay. I hadn't done this and I went to actually try it and it just wouldn't shift. I've never had this where I couldn't undo the oil cap on the engine. Uh, tried using both hands I think went and grabbed a cloth just in case I wasn't getting a good grip it just wouldn't come off uh, so typically for the how to you know how to undo this you just turn it I had to go and get some um, plumbers grips and just really undo it hard which left a bit of a mark in the cap but it did undo I think this is more indicative of the car's previous life where the previous owner didn't get it serviced or it hasn't had an oil change in years so now we've done that we're going to undo the filter now this is a bit naughty on my behalf, I should probably be using the oil filter wrench on this, um, I'm just using the kind of old method of using a screwdriver and a hammer to knock it through and then just turning the filter to get that to come off. Now luckily this wasn't on too tight, these never need to be on super tight, but if you just have a look at how old this is, um, I've never changed an oil filter that's been rusty, I've never had one that's looked quite so bad as this. And the engine oil is so black on this as well. I'm used to changing diesel oil, um, but I'm also used to petrol oil being cleaned on some of my other cars I've had in the past. So, yeah, this really, really did need the change. But basically, you're using oil filter wrench on that. You can use the method of training with the screwdriver. In fact, sometimes they just undo by hand. They never need to be on super tight, just tight enough. Now, typically, an oil change is always a messy job if you're not prepared for it, so I do recommend get some cardboard down or tarp or papers or whatever because you will spill some no matter how careful you try to be. I always end up doing something stupid with that. So, but what we're going to do now is we've got everything off and out, so now it's time to use the new filter. We're going to pre fill it with oil, so I'm using a fully synthetic oil that meets Honda's spec here. And we're going to fill the new filter up a bit and then I'm just going to put a little bit around the edge of the rubber which just kind of seals it when you put it back on. Now before we put it back on we need to put a sump plug back on. Now we either do that using the old washer but clean that up or putting the new washer on as well. So you can do that by just kind of screwing this on like this and you can put the washer up against the sump or you can put it on with the plug as well. So when you are tightening this up, remember that you're going to want to be able to undo it in 6 months to a year's time or 5, 10 or 15,000 miles time. You want to make this so it's not impossible for you to undo or the next person that's going to come to do it. Then the next thing is you're going to put the filter on so you can do this up by hand and it's good to get it nice and snug and hand tight. Now you can use a filter wrench if you've got one. Just remember if you are using a filter wrench you've got a lot more leverage. You might make things incredibly fun for yourself down the line on your next change. So just do it up so it's just tight enough. And I always think like tight and then just a little bit more. So we're gonna fill the oil back up now. So we're gonna use the synthetic oil I had before. And we're gonna use 3.6 liters. So bearing in mind, we've already got some in the filter. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on the oil jug for when it sort of gets down to about a two liter-ish mark. So I only need to get it down to about sort of a liter and a half left and I'm just gonna start checking the level on the dipstick. So yeah, basically just top it up until you get right into the middle of min and max or about to the point that you're happy. Also remember it's worth checking this after the oil's had a chance to settle and that the car is on a level surface. So if it is up on ramps or if it's up on jack stands and it's an angle, you might not get a true reading at this. That's why I find it best to sort of go between middle and max and then you can top up as you feel appropriate. And then just to finish off, we're just gonna take everything out once we've finished topping up the last little bit of oil. You're gonna clean up any oil that might have dripped over just like there because of it will make a mess. Also if it drops down onto the engine as it burns off, it will smell. So it's just nice and easy to use an old rag at this point just to keep things clean. I'm going to put the cap back on. I give the cap a little bit of a clean up off camera because I don't want it to be locked on tight for my next change. 
Now, aside from a few of the issues I had with things being tight, this was a nice, quick, easy job and it's part of essential maintenance. I hope this video has been handy for you. If you've got any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. And more than anything, thank you for watching.